Okay, Game Audio students, today we're going to be reviewing uh, concepts related to audio occlusion and also the use of audio volumes within uh, a level. I have created what I think may very possibly be the most annoying level I've ever created, and you're going to see why. Maybe I should just let you uh, appreciate that first. If I hit play, um, this character starts talking immediately. You have new mail. You have new mail. <laughs> you have new mail. So, um, you have yeah, new mail. I found that on the internet for you free. Uh, so that's one thing. You have new mail. You okay, have new sorry mail. about the music. I'll, I'll show you that you in a second. Uh, also, I can. You have new mail. You have new mail. For no reason. Okay, just you to make some mail. sound. You have new if we mail. go around this way, you have we've got mail. like a little uh, speaker set up. Sort of like a little music. Now it does have attenuation, have as does the you have new uh, new mail. You have new mail. You have but I'll new point mail. out uh, uh, as we go through here. Um, uh, some problems that uh, uh, we're going to try to control for. The first thing I want you to notice is that as my companion follows me upstairs, there's different rooms that should have different acoustics. Uh, the other thing is that um, in addition to the acoustics uh, of each room being different, uh, we should have uh, some occlusion at least uh, of this music while it's on. So it's going to attenuate over distance correctly, but you'll see is that when we go upstairs and we go through these different spaces that we've got, by the time we get here, we're technically closer to that emitter. And if there's nothing preventing it from entering this space, we're going to start hearing it louder. So let me uh, let you hear that problem first. And in order to do that, I'm going to edit, uh, let's see. Uh, my third person character one. So let me just bypass the sequence here for a moment. So it's not calling the talk function and it'll just follow me now. So I shouldn't have it uh, repeating, uh, you've got mail. Okay. So you're just following me. Okay, that's great. Uh, I can still turn the music on and off. So let's do that first. Let's turn the music on. Okay, so it's attenuating over distance. That's good. So we go upstairs. You know, it is possible that maybe if this were a real building, we might still be able to, uh, excuse me, the camera clipped <laughs> based on where you're standing. Uh, in any case, uh, maybe some of that sound in real life would be audible in this room if this were real life. However, at least some of the high frequencies would be cut off. Not only that, uh, not only that, uh, if I make that noise in that, you know, in this room, which you can see is made out of polished marble and porcelain and everything reflective, mirrors. By the way, the mirrors work. It's pretty cool. Anyway, I'm just marveling over graphical things. But in any case, um, uh, this room should be reverberant, right? Because there's nothing in here that is really absorbent of sound. Uh, maybe if I put some towels in there, uh, which I didn't, I just threw the room together really quickly to represent a room that should have reverberation. And this room, uh, the next room is kind of like an office environment. And uh, it is, also primarily made out of reflective surfaces, not entirely, but primarily. So we should still be able to hear, notice it, it's ridiculous the character choices that I made here. I have no idea. They're so anachronistic to uh, this environment. I just didn't want it to be the mannequin. So it's ridiculous. I'm sorry about that. But in any case, <laughs> there you go. Uh, and then by the time we get into this bedroom, as you can see, it's got carpet on the floor. It's got bedding. It's got two beds. I stuffed a whole bunch of things in here that would be absorptive of sound, such as that sofa and this additional sofa. And of course, the uh, 
you know, the pillows and the carpet, etc. And all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, reused pictures and that's supposed to be a TV mounted up there. And forgive me for not uh, necessarily making the greatest uh, level that you've ever seen. And also those curtains, um, I didn't feel like making door, like, you know, blueprints for this. They're just meant to be representative of the separateness of each one of these rooms, okay? Or each one of these different spaces here. Now the brick wall is uh, something that we can demonstrate uh, maybe the most easily uh, because that has to do with something called just straight up sound occlusion. So let me hit escape and we'll get back into our editor. So we'll close these tabs and I haven't saved in a, in a, in a minute. So let me hit save all, we'll hit save selected. Yeah, for some reason, my uh, computer's been saving slowly today, so I apologize about that. Uh, okay, so I made an audio folder for the various uh, things that I've uh, uh, brought in here. Um, one of them is just the... You have new mail. Okay, that, I made a sound cue out of that, and I again, I downloaded that from the internet. And then I got this... Oh no, I didn't get this, I, I excuse me, I, I made that up. That's just some music that I created one day. And uh, the uh, 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 vocalization for the character is just from this pack. This is an asset pack called Human Vocalizations. And I just found uh, something from one of these folders and made a cue out of it. It's, in, and it's still in whatever folder it's in. I don't even care, but uh, just so that I could do that. And uh, if you're interested in that animation, uh, I got an animation pack, which was this one female interactive animation set. I guess that's what it's called, okay? I don't remember if I bought it or if it's free. Uh, I probably could have gotten something from the general animations pack, uh, which uh, I'm pretty sure, or the general purpose animation pack, I beg your pardon, uh, that's always been free. Okay, uh, having said all that, um, let's make uh, perhaps outside of that audio folder, we'll make a new folder and I'll call it sound class assets. All right, sound class assets. And we'll double click to open that. Um, I want to uh, uh, have uh, a certain sound class for things that are environmental e emitters, uh, such as those speakers, and perhaps a different sound class for dialogue. Uh, which is being represented by the other character speaking that silly line, you've got mail or whatever she's saying. So let's make um, uh, a couple of different sound classes. Now I want you to know that Unreal Engine does come with a default sound class. So let me back up for just a moment. If I were to go into starter content, uh, which I've already lost, there it is, and just look at one of these audio uh, cues that it just comes with uh, comes with Unreal, you'll see that they're assigned to the master sound class. And if I look at the master sound class by double clicking it, we'll dock this as well, um, you can see that by default, um, apply ambient volumes is set to false. So therefore, uh, if you're going to be using um, uh, some of the things that, that we're going to need our sound classes to be able to do, um, uh, we would not want to leave everything assigned to uh, uh, the master sound class. We're going to want to make our own. Uh, and we can make our own here by dragging off of the master sound class and just defining new types or, uh, or classes, or I can just make them by right clicking in, in the folder that I created. Okay, so uh, uh, just remember there is a master default sound class. So uh, uh, if you don't assign something to a sound class, uh, it's going to be automatically defaulted to that. Okay, so getting back to that folder I made, sound class assets. Um, the, uh, it, in uh, the industry lingo, anything that is on camera that makes sound is oftentimes called source audio. So maybe uh, uh, I could use that in the naming of a sound class. So I'll right click and we'll hover our mouse over sounds. 
classes. And yes, naturally, that's where my recording controls are sitting. <laughs> I've got to move them, sorry. Okay, so uh, sound uh, classes. We'll make a sound class. We'll call it source audio uh, under source sound class. Okay. Uh, it's okay if it's not abbreviated. That doesn't matter. Okay. And uh, we will open that up. And let's just say that uh, in this particular case, because of where it's located, I may not want it to uh, uh, apply ambient volumes, but we'll see. I was going to make ambient volumes upstairs, but uh, there's nothing making sound in those rooms to bleed into the main room downstairs. So uh, let's see. Um, I'll make child classes from here, and I will say uh, that there's going to be a child class for source audio um, with acoustics. And without acoustics. Okay, that's all right. I don't mind having that. Uh, but the with acoustics one, that's the one where we're going to do apply ambient volumes, okay? And uh, therefore, that now exists as a sound class, and you'll see it there. They just need to be saved. So let's take those two new classes and save them. Okay, um, let's say that uh, I just have this emitter right here, sort of, this is really uh, badly faked, but it's just stereo mix that I just just simply put the uh, um, sound cue just right there in the scene. And uh, I'm controlling it, I think, through the level blueprint or something, uh, starting it and stopping it. But that's that's uh, not that relevant. Um, however, what I did is in that sound cue, I want you to notice something. In that sound cue, what I did is I uh, clicked this override attenuation uh, checkbox okay i set that to true so um with that set to true uh i enabled uh volume attenuation and uh, i chose the function that sounded best to my ears uh, i experimented with the inner radius and fall off distance i made sure enable spatialization was on um, I might have tweaked, uh, no, I don't think I tweaked anything there except for normalized 3D stereo sound because this was uh, in stereo and if forever, for any reason, should it ever play back in mono, uh, remember, uh, it'll add by 6 dB. So this applies a 6 dB uh, attenuation to stereo sounds. I was just making sure we had headroom. Uh, I did not enable occlusion, but I'm going to uh, in a little while just to just to demonstrate something to you. And uh, enable reverb send is turned on. All these things are things that uh, uh, I had to experiment with and override uh, in the override, excuse me, and set the parameters until it sounded right to my ear. Okay, so if I play the game and I just go over there. Oops, ran right into the wall. Uh, turn the music on. And, and then I walk away from it. That sounds about natural to me. But once I start getting into this room, I realize that, uh, you know, it first of all, I would hear reverberation in here. Uh, and if I could hear, that music anymore, it would be a lot duller, okay? And that's not happening, so that it's it's just not natural. Not only that, uh, this brick wall, uh, the reason that this is here is because it presents uh, a massive structure that is large in relationship to the wavelengths of the high frequencies. And uh, the higher frequencies are the treble, the treble, of course, in the music that's coming out of those or supposedly coming out of those speakers. So if I were on one side of the wall and listening to that music, it would occlude the high frequencies more than the low frequencies. And uh, all I'm hearing right now when I step around this uh, brick wall, I'm not actually hearing the sound occlude 
uh, I'm hearing it just attenuating with distance as if the wall were not there at all. But this wall would most definitely have an effect on not only the uh, high frequency content, but the overall loudness of that sound when I'm on this side of it, okay? So uh, let's demonstrate that first, okay? Uh, going back to our sound class assets folder, I'm going to make um, uh, an attenuation asset. Instead of overriding the attenuation in the sound queue, I'm just going to make an asset so that if I were to have anything else, uh, perhaps on the other side of this wall, um, or vice versa, I could use that same attenuation over and over and over again anytime I needed to apply to any particular environmental sound, okay, or you know, bit of source audio, let's say. So I'm going to right click and hover over sounds, and this time we're going to make a sound attenuation asset. And this is going to be uh, occlusion demo uh, underscore sound ATT. Okay, that's good enough for me, and we'll open that up. What you'll notice is that it has the same kind of parameters, the same kind of parameters as my override, as my override uh, here in the sound queue itself. When I clicked override attenuation, it made all of these things available to me. So since I did this by trial and error and experimentation, if I want this now to apply to an asset that I can reuse, I can copy these settings uh, unfortunately, I don't think I can copy them all. Maybe there is a way to do it with the uh, property matrix, but uh, then again, I've never tried that, so I don't want to go down a rabbit hole. Uh, but I can copy them into essentially right here into this uh, attenuation asset. So I remember I can just do a comparison. I use natural sound as my function. My attenuation shape was still spherical. Uh, the inner radius was 100, then 3,500, so we'll type 100 for my inner radius, or, uh, yeah, my falloff distance, I think, was 3,500, okay, yep, 3,500, beg your pardon, 3,500. Uh, I don't think I had to change anything here. I don't think I utilized air absorption, but you can, you know, that happens in nature. And if it's a large enough space, um, certainly uh, I might consider using that. Listener focus is a fascinating feature and one day we're gonna talk about it, but not in this lesson, I'm afraid. Uh, so uh, this, we have the reverb send enabled. Okay, and that's fine, we want that. But in this case, I'm going to enable occlusion, okay? And that's gonna be um, uh, something that this, uh, uh, you'll see how it's uh, used with this uh, music sound effect and uh, the brick wall. Um, this is a frequency in Hertz, and for those of you who are audio students, you know that 20,000 Hertz or 20 kilohertz is about the highest frequency that a person can hear. But um, when, you, when you are behind something that's massive and large in relationship to the wavelengths of the high frequencies, they will attenuate. So this low pass filter is going to reduce the amplitude of high frequencies um, uh, when, we want, when we want them occluded, such as when I'm behind the wall. And the way that it can do that is it's using the camera visibility trace, okay? So if, uh, in other words, if I can see the object with the camera, uh, it's not going to attenuate, uh, but uh, if I cannot see the object, it, it will interpolate, okay, and we can control the interpolation time as well, which is very, very important, uh, to some lower cutoff frequency. And let's just exaggerate this by a lot. So let's set this to like, like, uh 800 hertz okay just to make a just to make a serious point here okay 800 hertz is uh preserving the frequencies below 800 hertz but drastically reducing the amplitude of frequencies above 800 hertz and remember we can hear all the way up to 20,000 hertz and that is most of the spectrum gone so uh, we'll uh, talk about, we'll come back to the interpolation time. We can always edit this uh, uh, 
uh, attenuation asset later. And uh, we don't have an occlusion plugin, so that's not relevant. And okay, so we can now save this. All right. So here in the uh, mix of the uh, cue for the music, I, the name of the song was Mix of It. Mix of It. Okay. I can set this to our uh, sound class that we created for uh, source audio, let's say source audio with acoustics. And instead of override attenuation, I can just assign that one attenuation asset that we just made and we'll hit save. And let me just check the with acoustics that it is um, observing ambient volumes. Yes, okay, I just wanted to make sure that that was the case because I forgot whether or not we did that. So uh, uh, not much is going to change right now, but when I turn on the music, if this has worked correctly, let's see. I hope you can tell by listening that the music is not just quieter, but duller. Let's exaggerate that even more. Okay, so we're going to go to the uh, back to the filter, the low pass filter. I said it's at 800 hertz. Let's set it to 200 hertz now, and we'll do the same experiment. Okay, so we'll save. We'll turn on the music. Okay, it's full bandwidth right now, no filter. All right, that should be very, very obvious. So here's what I mean by the visibility trace. Okay, so that occlusion is based on uh, the camera uh, being able to see the object or not. And for a third person game, I think that is appropriate. Uh, the listener is actually the camera. That is something worth knowing and worth keeping in mind. Um, and uh, a lot of the times you'll get into circumstances where you'll say, boy, you know, I really wish the listener was the character, not the camera. Um, one day I'll show you how to do what's called an audio listener override if you want to try it that way. I can tell you um, most of the time it doesn't sound as much better as you think it would. That tends to work better in first person perspective than it does in third person perspective, but it isn't unheard of. And it's okay to wonder about that and one day we'll, we'll talk about it. So uh, here's what I want to do for this uh, um, attenuation asset. I, I don't want that to sort of like snap uh, between being able to hear it filtered and unfiltered. I'd rather have that interpolate more slowly. So the occlusion interpolation time, right, uh, is set to a uh, tenth of a second right now. So let's maybe do uh, 0.65. Maybe that would be, or 0.75. Could be even more gradual than that. We'll see. Uh, another thing uh, I noticed is that uh, it should have attenuated in volume a little bit more when I am uh, standing behind the wall. So uh, let's go to volume attenuation. And instead of having it set to a unity gain or one, which it still is, same volume, we'll knock it down to, let's say, 0.65 also or so. And let's see if this has made an improvement. Okay, so we'll go turn on the music and we're gonna listen. And we're gonna spy on the stereo from uh, the other side of the wall as well. I personally still think that's uh, way too fast. So let's go back to our interpolation time. Maybe set it to 1.25 seconds. I know sometimes the number, it seems uh, excessive, but uh, then again, uh, you just have to try it in the game and see what feels right. So I'll start the music from this side right now. Oh yeah, that's way better. Like 
keep on smashing my face into that brick wall. You know what, I would slow it down even more because uh, if we're actually playing the game, let's see, let's make that 1.65 seconds. If I'm running around there, turn on the music. Oh, something, something had a little error there. Okay, so the occlusion is working. Okay, I think we've taken away too much of the low frequencies. Um, but then again, maybe not. Maybe I kind of like it there at 200 hertz um, because of that massive brick wall. Uh, again, the size of the brick wall and its mass are mainly what determine uh, how much attenuation there is. And you could do the calculations and get this acoustically perfect if you wanted to. But then again, um, you just, uh, uh, it's, it's more important for it to feel right and sound right in the game, okay? So uh, we now have an attenuation asset for uh, uh, for that uh, sound for that uh, uh, cue as well, and uh, uh, again both are implemented at the level of the sound cue. Okay, so that uh, sound cue is of the with acoustics sound class, and instead of overriding the attenuation anymore, now we just have one uh, that we can reuse. So if I, for example, had a, a loud sound emitter in one of these other rooms, I could apply that same asset to that. Okay, so I hope that makes sense to you. Uh, now the uh, attenuation override for the uh, dialogue, I didn't put any attenuation uh, on the character, okay, because that's just playing at her location and she's never going to be farther from her own self <laughs> compared to her sound. So, but I did for the uh, You've Got Mail, okay, so if we go back to that uh, sound cue, let's look at that. Uh, on Where on earth? Audio. You've Got Mail is probably in there. Okay. Uh, that's still assigned to the default master sound class, and uh, I uh, just uh, overrode the attenuation. I probably don't even need this anymore. I probably didn't need it in the first place, to be honest. Uh, but again, I clicked override attenuation, and I set up some settings by trial and error that sounded about right for that character. So let's say that I had more than one AI and I wanted to apply the same attenuation settings for them. So let's do what we did before. Okay, we're going to go back to our, oh, some, oh, I removed the attenuation asset. That's why that needs to be saved. Excuse me on that. Uh, let's go back to our sound class assets folder and make an attenuation for uh, dialogue, uh, NPC dialogue. All right, so let's start by making a sound class for it. Uh, we'll say sounds, uh, classes, sound class, NPC, DFX, that's dialogue, underscore sound class. Okay, let's open that up. And that's going to also we want apply ambient volumes checked. You'll see why, okay? So we'll save that that way, save. And uh, we'll also make uh, uh, an attenuation asset. So sounds, sound attenuation. I'll call this NPC DFX underscore ATT. Okay, and I'm gonna open that up and dock it. And I want to look at that uh, in comparison to my um, attenuation override for this sound cue. Okay. You have new mail. Yeah, you have new sounds mail. sounds terrible. It sounds like it was over the computer speaker or something. Um, okay, so we, uh, anyway, so we've got that and uh, uh, let's just, uh, 
look what we've done. Enable volume attenuation. So we want to make sure that is true. So what do I have? Natural sound as my attenuation function. That was done by trial and uh, not trial and error, but listening. Okay, uh, just a trial and error. Trial and error isn't exactly fair because you know I have listened to each one of them and decide what is working best uh, in the game perceptually and psychologically. Attenu attenuation shape I left a sphere here, then inner uh, radius and fall off distance for a hundred and twelve hundred. So let's duplicate that here. One hundred. 1200 and I'm not saying that these are necessarily the best possible but it's what I it's what I what sounded good to me at the time okay I don't think I changed anything there enable spatialization is true uh, I think by default uh, and this was not stereo so I didn't have to normalize the stereo sound uh, enable reverb send should be on by default and it is. And let's see, what else did I do, if anything? Nothing, okay? It was just pretty much that. So let's save that, and we'll go back to this uh, queue, and instead of overriding the attenuation, I'll replace it with the asset that we just made, which was uh, the NPC dialog save. Okay, so let's uh, start her talking once again. We'll edit her blueprint. Remember, I bypassed the sequence. So we'll co uh, connect uh, then zero to follow and then uh, then one to talk. And again, those were just custom events that I made down here. You can see there's a follow and there's a talk. OK, compile and save. And she should sound like she sounded before. You have new mail. 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 You have new okay. mail. You have new now, mail. Now that's uh, something that uh, um, is going to take some getting used to. That's going to probably disturb you at first. There are ways of controlling that. And uh, uh, part of the reason is then that, again, the camera is the listener. And this is a good example of what I mean when I say the camera is the listener. You have new mail. So right now you the camera is on the opposite you side of me mail. than the character. You have new mail. You have new mail. You so that can be a, a little disconcerting. But then again, if you were watching a movie and you were the observer looking into this scene, you would want that sound to do exactly what it's doing, especially once we start having uh, 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 simulated acoustics and reverb within these particular spaces. Okay, which leads me to my next uh, point. It's That's why I've, uh, in these particular sound classes, uh, I have the with acoustics and without acoustics for the uh, sound classes. So with acoustics, um, we have apply ambient volumes. And ambient volumes are invisible volumes that you can place into spaces uh, in which you can apply different reverb characteristics. But only if your sound class that you uh, have assigned uh, to that particular sound cue uh, has that particular checkbox set to true, okay? And we do, we have that uh, for with acoustics and also for our uh, dialogue, okay? Apply ambient volumes, okay? So we've got that uh, for our dialogue and I think we assigned it already. Uh, let me just double check. I wanna just make sure that we set it in the... Mm, Yes, okay, so that is there. And nope, wrong sound class. Okay, I'm glad I checked. DFX sound class, there we go, save. All right, this would not have worked. And I would have been frustrated because that would have still been assigned to the master sound class and therefore this would not have worked uh, in the demonstrations that you're about to see. But now it will. Okay, so let's take on this room first, right? Let's uh, go to our place actors panel, oops. Just moved that wall, didn't mean to. All right, and we're gonna search for something called an audio volume. 
and I'll drag it into this room right here. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we have to scale this as best we can to match the uh, proportions of this room. So let me just get the scaling tool and see how close we can get here. Okay, and how narrow is that? It's not wide enough. I think I have to squash it in here so I can see the wireframe better. And then I'm going to slide that over a bit because when I, yeah, I think you know what I mean. And it doesn't have to be perfect, 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 but just about the dimensions of the room that you're doing it for. And uh, we'll just sweep that over a tiny bit. Yeah, I've got my snapping values set really, really small or sometimes even off when I'm doing stuff like this. So that geometry looks okay. Uh, looks like I uh, overdid it on the other side of that wall, but that doesn't really matter because there is no other side of that wall in this level. Okay. So now we have an audio volume and uh, with that audio volume selected, I can rename it. Uh, and sure I can with my media control sitting right over it. I can rename this. Uh, so if I hit, for example, F2, I'll call this bathroom audio volume, just so we can keep ourselves uh, organized here. Now, the, this is now uh, considered an ambient volume, right? And one thing that it's going to ask us for under ambient zone settings uh, it are things that uh, have to do with uh, preventing things from outside from getting inside and things from the inside going outside. All right, so uh, if we read these things very, very carefully, and I want you to understand also None of this really takes effect until the camera is in the space. Okay, that's that's important to take note of also. Exterior, the, the real way to understand these is to read each tooltip as literally as you possibly can. So right now, exterior volume, the desired volume of sounds outside the volume when the player, really the camera, is inside the volume, okay? So right now, uh, if I go up here, let me turn on the music. You have Sorry about that. You have new mail. You have I can mail. still hear that in here, all right? You have new mail. So if I went back to that audio volume, okay, uh, and what I can do is I can set the exterior volume, let's say, to zero. Let's see how that works. And it's the exterior time uh, is an interpolation time. So let's save that and try it again. And then we'll see uh, if our sound class is indeed uh, observing the ambient volume, which it ought to be, okay? It should turn the exterior volume down to zero once the camera is in the bathroom. So start the music. You have new... Okay, uh, sorry, I'm back. Unreal just crashed, so uh, I have to see where we left off here. So let's go back into play. And you have oh, that still works. You have new uh, mail. Let's actually, you have new mail. let's go back and edit the uh, companions of the, the new mail thing uh, gets turned off there for a minute. So that character won't talk for now. We'll just deal with the uh, music. And uh, we still want follow, but not off the sequence. So we'll just do it like that for now. Okay, so uh, if, uh, if I'm correct, we should be able to start the music up. And once the camera is in the bathroom, we should no longer hear it. Okay. And how long that takes to die out uh, is something that we can set using the interpolation time, okay? And, uh, but I'm just setting it all right here. These are the uh, settings for that volume. So make sure that uh, you understand in order to edit those settings, you have to have the audio volume selected in the world or in your uh, 
world outliner. So here's our bathroom audio volume. Let's say I don't want the exterior volume to be all the way down. Uh, but certainly the low pass filter would be very much in effect. Let's set that uh, really, really low. Okay. And there's also an interpolation time for the filter. Interior volume is if there were something making sound inside this room, like those speakers downstairs, how much I want to contain it within this room uh, and and uh, uh, prevent it from being able to get out. So uh, the desired volume of sounds inside the volume, excuse me, when the player is outside the volume. So excuse me, I, I misstated that. So if there was something in this room, if I exit this volume, if, if I'm outside the volume, how loud should that bleed into an adjacent volume, for example? And how long should that take? And should I filter out any high frequencies? And how long should that take? Okay, but I don't have sound emitters in these other rooms. So now that I've done that, uh, it should be much quieter in here. And it should also be um, uh, uh, much, much duller. So let's find out. Turn on the music. Barely audible, barely audible, okay? So I think that we can, we, maybe we uh, reduce the volume too much. So the exterior volume, bring that up a little bit, save. The audio volume isn't really like uh, an asset that I can grab down here, um, but it is in our world, so let's see. Music. That works for me, okay? So now, I'm noticing that uh, uh, this room just sounds very, very dry, and it shouldn't because uh, it's made out of all this reflective stuff. So we should have reverb in here as well. So, uh, with that audio volume still selected, all right, we're going to look under reverb and under settings, apply reverb is checked, but it's asking for a reverb effect. So our reverb effect is something that can come from a plugin if we have a plugin in that we've enabled. Uh, and there's, there's a lot to say about this, but there is a default um, uh, algorithmic reverb uh, that comes with Unreal, and it's it's okay for now. So let's go to our content drawer, and I'll go back to my sound class assets. Maybe I'll make a folder for this, and I'll call it reverbs. Get inside of there, and a reverb is an asset we can create. So we're going to right click sounds and we're going to go under uh, effects of course reverb effect and i can call this bathroom reverb okay doesn't need to have an underscore necessarily and if i double click this asset this is just like uh you know a typical algorithmic reverb uh, i'm going to set this up to have a uh, for now a long decay time because everything in that room is reflective of sound. I also like to turn the gain up all the way uh, on my uh, reverbs. Uh, not the early reflections necessarily, if they're on, but uh, uh, just the overall reverb, just so that we can hear it uh, very, very obviously at first. We can always come back and edit this, okay? So let's, I'm just estimating what I think a bathroom might sound like, and the early reflections gain is probably gonna be pretty loud. The delay time is probably going to be a lot longer, something like that. And the high frequencies, yeah, that's probably about right. So let's save that bathroom reverb. And now uh, here in this audio volume, which is still selected under reverb effect, we're going to go bathroom reverb and put, put that right there. Okay. Um, now, I'm playing a sound cue uh, that, frankly, I don't remember uh, in my third-person character. So let's go to that blueprint 
And uh, that animation and sound, uh, I'm just doing with my left mouse button. Every time she yells, I didn't have anything really great that was recorded. So I didn't remember what the asset was, but remember, I can always find it in my event graph and use the browse to asset uh, uh, thing. Okay, so there's that. Let me see. That's still assigned to the master sound class, and I don't want it to be, but I don't think that I've made yet uh, a sound class uh, or anything like that for our, uh, our main character. So we're going to go back to our sound class assets. Let me look again. Okay, and uh, I probably should have made uh, like a master uh, sound class, but that's okay. Uh, what I'll do is I'll make yet another sound class. Sounds, sound class, and I'll call this character uh, uh, dialogue underscore sound class, or I should have said character VFX, whatever. Okay, that's okay. So let's open that up and we will apply ambient volumes to that. And it's sending to the master reverb, which is good and nothing is messing this up. So we'll hit save and go back to our uh, uh, queue. Let's go back to our sound queue here and assign it to, let me make sure this is what I think it is. And it is, okay, so we're gonna go to character sound class, the one that I just made, okay? And uh, uh, override attenuation, well, I don't. I would do this probably, uh, no, I wouldn't override the attenuation, but I could create an attenuation asset uh, for, this, for this character if it were important that she could not be heard outside of the rooms that she's in by other players, okay? I hope that makes sense. We could do, we could do our, our own, uh, attenuation asset for the player that we th we would never hear ourselves, but we would only be able to if we were if it was a multiplayer game, for example, and I was in one room as a player and somebody else was hearing me from the outside. Uh, but that's not the case in our game, so I'm not going to bother. Uh, let's see. Uh, I still might make an attenuation for this though, uh, uh, but uh, it would be for different reasons. So we'll hit save. And now that that sound cue is assigned to the correct sound class, let's go back to the audio volume and uh, we'll see if uh, we can hear the reverb. So out here, there's no audio volume. I did that as just a reference point. But if we go inside this room, So let's see what's wrong with that. Let's go back to the character dialogue sound class, apply ambient volumes, send to master reverb is on, volume pitch, always play child classes, and character dialogue sound class. No, that looks good. Okay, so let me just double check with that sound uh, cue one more time. We've got a reverb. Let's see. Did I override? Let's see. Okay. So I did not. Let me just override the attenuation for a second and enable the reverb send there. I might have to make an attenuation asset for this, but let me just turn up the reverb send uh, by a lot. And We'll set that to one, we'll set that to one, and minimum send distance, let's reduce that to 20, and max send distance, well, we'll leave that alone for now, save, listener focus shouldn't matter, effects, doesn't, that's not it, okay, save. Third person character, place sound at location. And let's also do this for our third person character. Let's see if it's working for our third person character. 
Uh, excuse me, our other third person character. Where is she? I can't find her. So there she is. All right, and she's playing that horrible um, sound. You have new mail. <laughs> okay, so let's go there. We've assigned that sound class, and yeah, we made we made an attenuation asset. So let's hook that back up inside of the blueprint and see if we can hear the reverb from the companion. Okay, get that sequence hooked up again. And yep, should be good. You have new mail. 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 <laughs> you have new mail. That might be a, a, a little you bit much on that reverb effect. So let's go back to our bathroom audio volume, find the reverb effect. And uh, let's see. That's a lot of reverb. So let's reduce the reverb time. Let's reduce the gain of the early reflections. And I'm gonna increase the delay time on those as well. My late delay should be longer. Save. Let's see if that sounds anything more like a bathroom. You have new mail. Yeah! You have new mail. You have new mail. You have new mail. Yeah! Okay. New mail. Uh, I do think the reverb is a little bit loud. So uh, here in the details panel under reverb for uh, uh, the reverb that we just added, uh, I can turn that down some now. That's why I set it to uh, max gain in the reverb itself. That this enables me to use this multiplier uh, in the details panel, and uh, I can control it from outside the asset. Also curious uh, uh, if we're going to hear uh, the reverberation on the, the muddy uh, low frequencies of the music if we turn that on while we're in that room. You have, new mail. you have new mail. You have new mail. You have new mail. You have new mail. Okay, I think I turned it down you too much. New... So you would just play with it here in the details panel. This time I'm going to start the music before we go up there. Go ahead, take your time. <laughs> okay, here we go. Play. You have new mail. You have new mail. You have new mail. Our fusion is still working. You have new mail. You have new mail. She's in my way. You have new mail. 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 You might have just seen a glitch there. You Hold on, I've got to check my video recorder. You have new mail. You yeah, something glitched out on my screen, so I was concerned that I was crashing again, but it looks like I'm okay. One thing I noticed, though, is that it's taking uh, the interpolation time for the reverb to take effect in the uh, bathroom. It's happening over two seconds, and I think that's too slow. So let's make that a faster transition. You have new mail. You have new mail. <laughs> okay, and that's too you have loud. So we dial it in. You have new mail. You have new mail. You have new mail. Okay, so I'm going to go with mail. something approximately like that for now. Just turn that down a little bit more. And now we can look at the acoustics of the next room. Okay, so we've got this audio volume here. Let me just uh, clear my search. And remember with the gizmo, if I option shift or alt shift, if I click and drag, 
it's making a copy of that actor. I'm going to drag that right over. Uh, I'm not saying these rooms are the same dimensions, but uh, at least it's something to start with. And you can see that that's uh, now uh, a separate actor in our world outliner. So I can see that this one uh, just needs to be scaled a little bit differently. It's a little wider on this axis. OK. So uh, for this audio volume, uh, we'll rename this. Let's do it the easy way, F2, and we'll call it uh, Office Audio Volume. And uh, let's make a new reverb for that, OK? So what I can do is um, sound class assets, reverbs. I can duplicate this and just change the settings, uh, first of all, and the name, Office Reverb. So at the Office, it would be uh, the um, decay time would be very, very short. I'm bummed out uh, personally, uh, if anybody's listening at Epic, but uh, uh, if you set the decay time to minimum, 0.1 seconds for your information is 100 milliseconds. And by any audio engineer in engineering standard uh, for uh, uh, reverb decay time, that is definitely not short enough. Uh, so they need to do something better than that. They need to make this go into, you know, uh, uh, more, more decimal places, like 0. 0.000 stuff. Uh, in any case, um, I still want it to be short duration. Maybe the early reflections are going to be louder in this room and the, uh, uh, the late gain, uh, the early reflections might not be as bright. So I'll take some high frequencies out of them, but I want them to be louder. And uh, we'll just change the relative delay time between the simulated reflections like that. Save. Okay, so let's uh, now see if our acoustics change when we enter that office. Ah! You, have you have new mail. You have new mail. You have new mail. Ah! You have new mail. You have new mail. You have new mail. You have new mail. Hold on. Uh, I forgot to you replace have... it. Okay, that's. I was thinking, hey, that doesn't sound different at all. But of course, everybody sees my mistake now. In the office audio volume, we still have the bathroom reverb asset. So that's going to go there instead of office reverb. Now we'll hear the difference, hopefully. You have new mail. You have new. Okay, yeah. something glitched out. Let's you have new mail. Yeah. You have new mail. You have new yeah. mail. You have new mail. You have new mail. Get out of my way. You have new mail. You have new mail. You yeah. have new mail. You have new mail. Yeah. You have new mail. You have new mail. You have new mail. Okay, so in this audio, you have new uh, audio volume, I think that the volume of the reverb again is too loud. So let's turn that down a bit. So let's play again. You have new mail. 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 Okay, so hopefully you can you hear why I think 100 milliseconds as the minimum you is way too mail. long. You have new mail. You have new mail. Okay, it should be a shorter duration than that. And it's going to cause similar problems, I think, uh, when it comes to the bedroom, uh, which should have even a shorter reverberation time. So we'll cheat again and we'll borrow this uh, audio volume that we've got. I'm holding down uh, Alt Shift or option shift, and we'll just bring one into here. Okay. So, uh, ooh, what's this? The office audio volume is way too big. Okay, so uh, let's see. Office audio volume two. 
Let me delete that for a second. Office audio volume extends. Wait, I might be wrong. What is this? Wireframe. Bathroom audio volume. That's correct. Office. Oh, no, we're good. I'm sorry. I thought I saw an extra wireframe in the bathroom. Or there's a sentence you don't hear every day. Okay, so we've got bathroom audio volume. I need the gizmo for it. And it's way over there. Not bathroom. Uh, office. Audio volume. Sorry. We'll borrow this. Option shift or alt shift. And we'll bring this into here. And we will scale it. Lost it. Office. No. Uh, Office Audio Volume 2, I'm going to rename right now, F2 Bedroom Audio Volume. Okay, so now that we've got that uh, in there, let's scale that to be the correct proportions. And it is okay, you can see the wireframes. If two audio volumes overlap, Number one, they will blend, but there's another thing that you should know is that you can also have what's called a priority. So if I have overlapping audio volumes, if I set the priority higher on one, it will take precedence over the other one. So you can set a priority, uh, and this is just like a never ending float. So, you know, you can. I don't even know why it goes into the negative, but uh, you can always decide uh, if you want one audio volume to take precedence over another if they happen to be like nested or if they overlap or whatever. Okay, so uh, that's about the size of the bedroom and let's make another reverb. I'll duplicate the one we have, duplicate, and we'll call it bedroom reverb. Bedroom reverb. And this is gonna be a lot duller, right? So let's take the reflections gain and we'll turn those down. The high frequencies, even less in the early reflections, but also, uh, let's see, decay in the high frequencies, that's gonna be uh, a lot faster than it was. And the early reflections will be quieter. The decay time I would make even shorter if I could. Um, let's see, reflections delay, I can make that different still because the room could have different dimensions. We could calculate that, but the parameter does not have enough of a range of values to let it, let us dial it in perfectly. Uh, that's where other reverb plugins, quite frankly, uh, come in handy. Uh, we'll talk about that on some other day. So the high frequencies are much duller and we'll save and then we will clean up our tabs here for a second because that's getting confusing and we've got the bedroom reverb okay so do I have the bedroom audio volume selected and for that we're going to use bedroom reverb yeah. you have new mail yeah. You have new mail. Why is that happening? There should not be any reverb downstairs. Probably because I set them to the sound class that, uh, well, there is no audio volume down here, so I don't exactly know why. That's because yeah! it was a bug, okay? That mail. was just a clear fluke, okay? It is dry down there. That was puzzling, though. Okay, so let's play the game. You have new mail. 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 So there's not enough of a difference in the bedroom reverb, so let's, uh, if I could make the decay time shorter, I would. Let's reduce the density of the reverb. Uh, let's reduce the high frequency air absorption. 
uh, cutoff frequency uh, and we'll turn down the level of the reverb right in the asset itself or the details panel. You have new mail. Turn on the music. Mail. Oops. You have new mail. 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 Okay, I noticed that the, the music did get a little bit louder uh, as we got closer to it. So if we go back to these audio volumes, uh, if we look at the original one that we did for the bathroom, okay, uh, we had the, excuse me, I'm looking in the reverbs, that's silly. Okay, so let's go to sound class assets. There they are. Okay, and we've got um, these attenuations. So let's see. No, beg your pardon. The audio volume is what I want to look at. Uh, the bedroom, the bathroom audio volume. Okay, so let's look at the uh, exterior settings. Uh, so we can apply similar settings. Let's just round some of this off. So let's say 63 and 90. Okay, 63 and 90. I think that those will work. So let's go back to bedroom. 63 and 90 are the values that I'm remembering. Uh, oh, wait, no, that inherited that because uh, I was uh, I was duplicating them, so that's fine. Uh, but we can attenuate it even more, I think. So the exterior volume, let's make it even quieter. Successive, successively, so we'll look at our audio volumes. Uh, so the one that has the uh, lowest exterior volume is the bedroom. Then... The bathroom uh, is 0.6. The bedroom is 0.2. We'll make this, I don't know, 0.3 or 0.4, somewhere in between. Uh, and uh, for each room that we travel through, the uh, uh, remember the bathroom, maybe the low pass frequency is a little bit too aggressive. That looks fine. And then for the bed, the uh, bedroom, we'll set it the lowest. Okay. Start the music. You have new mail. Yeah! You have new mail. You have new mail. You have new mail. Yeah! That's still a little loud. You have new mail. You have new mail. You have new mail. Yeah! You have new mail. Not perfect. You have new mail. But it would take some tweaking. You have new mail. You have new mail. You have new mail. You have new mail. Now, of course, if I wanted to keep that bleed out of the bedroom completely, I could just set my exterior volume to zero, and then by the time we're in the bed, the bedroom, uh, we will no longer hear it. Okay, and the uh, interpolation time uh, is set to half a second, but you know, I think that's okay. We can make it more gradual if you want it to be more blended. You have new mail. You have new mail. So I can still hear it. You have new mail. You have new mail. That reverb is too loud. You have new mail. You have new mail. You have new mail. But in here. You have new okay, mail. that just cut off. So you let's uh, correct the interpolation time in that case. Okay, and play it one more time. That's that's just an estimate. Again, if it's not perfect, um, oh, excuse me, that's the filter, and I set the wrong parameter. So this is the the exterior time is what I wanted to set. So we'll just turn that up to. Oh, a second or so. See, it's saving slowly. I don't know why. One of those days. Come on. You're killing us. You're killing us. All right. Yeah! 
You have new mail. 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 Let's go back out. You have new mail. You have new mail. Start. You have start hearing that again. You have new mail. You have new mail. Back to the bathroom. You have new mail. You have new mail. You have new mail. You have new mail. And then down here. You have new mail. You have new mail. We've got the sound occluding. You have new mail. 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 I don't think the camera is quite in there yet. You have new mail. You have new mail. You have new mail. You have new mail. Well, I was thinking about having a surprise for you uh, at the end of this video where all of a sudden our hero uh, suddenly attacks the you've got new mail character and uh, tears her to shreds <laughs> for being so annoying. But uh, functionally, I hope this did the job for you. So now you understand how to uh, start organizing your sound classes and uh, implementing occlusion as well as controlling your ambient zone settings here for each uh, for each audio volume. Uh, hopefully you understand how to create uh, uh, reverbs. Uh, and by the way, uh, just for your information, if you ever really want to, you can do this under view options and you can go to show engine content. I usually have that checked, but you don't by default. So if we go to the engine content, uh, and I look, there is a folder that does contain some reverb presets, just for your information, if you don't feel like trying uh, them out for yourself. So uh, let's see if I can just uh, search for reverb. Okay, there's a folder in here that's just all different, uh, pre like reverb presets. So there's one for bathroom already and so forth. So you can try out the presets that come with uh, engine content if you want. But, uh, I, you know, it's going to vary. Uh, the way that uh, truly that you're going to get realistic sounding acoustics is when you learn about sampled acoustics or convolution reverb uh, in Game Audio 2 or in one of my uh, other audio engineering classes, we also talk about convolution reverb. Uh, that's a lot more realistic sounding than algorithmic reverb, which is what we use today. Uh, because it is uh, actually a type of, you know, it's called sampled acoustics because it really is a sample uh, or a certain type of measurement uh, of the acoustics of real spaces. And those real spaces, um, of course, if you were there, they would have an acoustical signature. And that acoustical signature is copied, essentially, for all intents and purposes, into what's called an impulse response file. So uh, if you if you get hip to convolution reverb, uh, you can even make you know take your own impulse responses from uh, just interesting sounding locations that you know of. We have uh, impulse responses uh, from all oh, all over the world. You know places like the Taj Mahal or uh, various caves. You know famous locations, concert halls, places like that. Um, but uh, anybody can learn how to create impulse responses uh, with uh, not too much training, and they do sound more realistic because it is uh, essentially the exact reverb uh, that has been sampled, applied uh, in an in a audio volume, just like we use this uh, algorithmic reverb. So uh, just know that that's, that's coming in game audio too, as well as dynamic footsteps so that your, uh, uh, your footstep sounds will change depending, depending on what is being walked upon. And that's also a very exciting thing in my opinion. 
Uh, okay, so that's it for today. Thank you for sticking through this tutorial, and I will see you this week. Bye-bye.